Hey, what's going on? John Elder from Codemy.com here, and today I want to talk about Git and GitHub with Windows. So you're a coder, you're building things, projects, websites, whatever, and you want to push your code up to GitHub, and you want to use version control, Git, but you're on a Windows computer. What do you do? Well, a lot of coders I know use Linux and Mac, and Git sort of usually comes with that, or it's very easily installed. Not so easy with Windows, and a lot of people get confused by this. So today we're going to download a Windows version of Git. We're going to set it up. We're going to have it working completely on Windows. We're going to connect to GitHub. We're going to push some code, and it should be pretty cool. But before we get started, take just a second to head over to Codemy.com and check out some of our online courses. I've got courses on Rails, Python, uh, JavaScript, HTML, SQL. What else do we got? Ruby. PHP, some cryptocurrency stuff, WordPress, you name it, we've got it, Ubuntu. Uh, go check that out. If you use coupon code SUPERCODER, you get 20 bucks off of total membership. That brings it down to, I think, $27. Super good deal, so check that out. So now, enough nonsense. Let's start out by downloading the thing that we're going to use to uh, set up Git. Just go to git-scm.com, and this is just a little version of Git running bash, I think, uh, for Windows. Really cool, absolutely free, doesn't cost anything, really easy to download and install. So just come over here and click download. Now I'm on Windows 7, doesn't really matter what version of Windows you're on. So we could save this anywhere, I'm just gonna save it to the desktop. And it's 39 megabytes, not very big, should download very quickly. Okay, and once it's downloaded, you could just click this and let's run it. Now there's a couple of little things we need to do. So we're gonna take just click next. Now it's going to install in program files for or backslash git. Doesn't really matter. Click next. Now you can create a desktop icon if you want. No big deal. Make sure that this git uh, git bash thing is clicked. Right. That's the thing we're going to be using. The rest we can leave default. Uh, start menu is going to say git. Now it's asking you what editor you want to use. I don't know what this is all about. You don't use an editor with git. We're just going to use the, the bash command line, but uh, if you have Notepad on your computer, Notepad++, just click that. I don't know what that does. It's kind of silly. Now, this is the important screen right here. So we have three different options. We can use git and git bash only. We can use git from the Windows command prompt, or we can use git and optional Unix tools for, uh, from the Windows command prompt. We want this third one. This is going to add git to our path, our computer's path. And if you know what that is in Windows, it's important. If you don't know what it is, it doesn't really matter that you don't know. Just know that we need to click this one. This will make Git work everywhere on our computer, which is what we want. So uh, click Next. Now open SSH. Make sure that's clicked because we're going to need that to connect to GitHub in a little bit. Open SSL library, same deal. And let's see. We want this check out Windows style, commit Unix style line endings. And again, these are all just the defaults. We want to use min tty. Again, it's a default. And then finally, let's see. We probably don't need this last one checked, so I'll just leave that as the default as well. So now we're going to go ahead and install, and it's doing its thing. Doesn't take very long to install. If we click that button way back then to add a desktop icon shortcut it'll do that otherwise we can just launch it straight from here when it finishes installing which it looks like it has okay so we don't need to view the release notes we can go ahead and just launch it so this is the terminal this is your git bash terminal and we can see we're in c users flat planet flat planet is just the name of my computer because i think it's hilarious um and we see this you know, normally your, your command prompt looks like this, C colon backslash. You notice up here, it's just, it's slightly different. Just sort of keep note of that. Now, the first thing we need to do is generate an SSH key for connecting to GitHub, right? So that's the tricky part. A lot of times people are like, wait, how do I get an SSH key on Windows? There's a bunch of different ways you can do it. You can download uh, PuTTY, which is a little uh, program. We won't do that. This actually comes with with an SSH generator key or SSH generator program in it. So from our root directory here, the C users flat planet, right where we are, 
we can just type, uh, we want to go mkdir, we need to make a directory and put dot ssh. The dot makes it a hidden directory. So, okay, so now we need to move into that directory. So let's change directory to dot ssh. And I could type pwd to make sure that we're in there and we are, flat planet ssh. I can type ls to list everything and there's nothing in there right now, so that's good. So now we need to just generate an SSH key. So it's pretty easy, we just type in ssh-keygen.exe, oops, keygen.exe, okay. So it's generated a public-private RSA key pair. It says where do we want to save this? We would just want to save it right here where we are, so click enter, and then you can Put a password if you want, type it again, and boom, it's been generated. So now we can ls and we can see we have these two files here. And this is the one that we really care about. So let's go pwd, we're still in the same directory. Let's go cat for catalog, c users flat planet dot ssh, and then id underscore rsa dot pub. And boom, here is our SSH key. So we can highlight this and copy this. I just right clicked and click copy. Now we can go back over to GitHub and add this SSH key. So let's do that now. So just go to your GitHub, log in. If you don't have a GitHub account, go ahead and create one, it's totally free. And then come over here to your little icon here and click settings. And then SSH and GBG keys, we wanna add a new SSH key. I'm just going to call this Windows, call it whatever you want, it doesn't matter. Now we can right click and just paste in all of that gobbledygook that we just generated. So boom, now it's been, it's been created. So you'll probably get an email from GitHub saying, hey, you've added a new SSH key, is this you? You just ignore that. So cool. So now we want to set up Git on our computer, save our code to our Git repository, and then push that code up to GitHub. So we need some code. So I'm just going to, let's clear the screen, PWD. I'm just going to move into a directory that I know has um, some code that I want to save. So um, let's see, it's Django. This is just a Django project. There we go. That I worked on a while back. And so we can see, all right, so we need to go into my underscore site. Okay, so this is where we want to go. This is just a basic uh, Django project, right? So we have our manage.py file and some other stuff. Now, what we need to do is designate this area as a Git repository, and then we need to initiate Git and save our code. So this is a multi-step process, pretty simple, but we need to punch in a few commands into the terminal here. So the first command is git config dash dash global space user dot name and then your name so John Elder hit enter then the next command is git config dash dash global user dot email and then your email at gmail.com okay next we need git config dash dash global push dot default matching and then get config dash dash global alias dot co checkout and then finally get init and all of these first things sort of set settings and then this git init initializes git it turns it on and you can see it's initialized an empty git repository in this directory and if we clear the screen you can see it doesn't show up because it's a it has a dot in front of it it's a hidden directory so we can go ls dot a i think yeah right there we go so let's see there it shows up it shows all the hidden directories there so Git is now set up. Now we need to save our code and commit it to our new repository. So let's go it, git add period. The period stands for everything. 
and then git commit dash am and let's call this initial commit and you can see boom it's added if you look through here these are all the files in this directory cool so the next thing to do is push this code to our github repository but we haven't created a github repository yet so let's head back over to github click your profile and then repositories and then let's just create a new one and this one was a Django authentication app. Call it anything you want, it doesn't really matter. And we want this public. Uh, GitHub, you know, if you click private, you have to pay for it. it, costs seven bucks a month. We just want public, that's fine. And we can leave the rest default and create a repository. Now, last step, we need to copy and paste these two commands into our terminal. So just highlight control C to copy command C if you're on a Mac, but you wouldn't be because this is a Windows tutorial. Or you could just right click and click copy and then right click again and paste, enter. And then finally, copy and paste again. So git push u origin master. This will push our code up to our newly created repository on GitHub. Oh, the first time you're going to get this little thing, it says it can't, uh, the identity of GitHub can't be established. Is it okay? Just type in yes and hit enter. So it's permanently adding the GitHub RSA to your known hosts. So now it's asking for your passphrase for the, uh, the key we created at the beginning of this video. So that, that password you typed in, just type it in again. You don't have to type a password when you create your uh, SSH key. You can just hit enter to leave it blank. And if that's the case, you'll just hit enter now to leave it blank. It might not even ask you for the password in that case. Okay, so it looks like it's done some things. It pushed it up. Okay, so now we can come back over here to GitHub and click on our profile. And repositories in 29, we can see a new one has been created and there it is, Django Authentication App. And we can see it does have all of our stuff. We can look at the code which we don't care about for the purposes of this video. We just want to see that we've actually pushed stuff. So we can make some changes to the code and then save it again with Git. And in the future to push it to GitHub, we would just type Git push instead of Git push you origin master like we just did um, up here. You don't have to do that every time, only this first time. In the future, you just put Git push. So. Very, very cool and very easy, super free, you know, love free. And now you can use Git and GitHub on your Windows computer, just like you would if you're on a Linux or a Mac. Same commands, same everything, and it's very, very cool. So if you like this video, please click the little bell thing, subscribe to my channel on YouTube, or let's see, head over to Codemy.com. have almost 30 courses here on everything you can imagine. There's programming language courses, there's project courses where you know we create something like a stock market app with Rails or a cryptocurrency app with Python, superhero name generator with Rails, all kinds of cool stuff. So look through here, and like I said earlier, membership is usually $49, that's a one-time fee. Uh, it's not monthly, you never pay anything more. You get all future courses free of charge. I'm always adding new courses. Anytime I do, you get them for free. Uh, but if you click here and click on this discount code thing and type in SuperCoder, which I know is a dumb coupon code, but you get another $22 off. So you just pay $27 for all of my courses, hundreds of hours of video, hundreds of courses or hundreds of videos. Uh, that's pretty cool. You get access to me. You can ask questions. You can interact with other students. We've got over 70,000 students. Everyone seems to really like it. I think uh, it's a pretty good resource if you're interested in learning to code and you want some more structured videos than what you just normally find on YouTube, uh, go ahead and check that out. So my name is John Elder. Thanks for watching.